As a dividend investor, I mostly don't care about the everyday fluctuations of the stock price. It's not something I concern myself with because it doesn't affect my income. Half the time, I don't even know what the stock market is doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Although plenty of people are happy to tell me when the stock market goes down. Hey, are you, are you okay? Yeah, why? The stock market has gone down. Does that mean you've lost money? No, no, it's just... But it's it's gone down. It'll go back up. Are you poor? No, it's fine. Don't worry, don't panic. It's not a big deal. It, it's fine. I told you the stock market sucks. Okay, so why isn't stock price a priority for me and for many other dividend investors? When you're an investor, the stock price only matters in two cases, when you're buying and when you're selling. It really doesn't matter what type of investor you are. If you're a growth investor or a value investor, you're looking for stocks that are underpriced or undervalued. And then over time, the stock price will increase and there'll come a point where you want to sell at a profit. It's the whole typical buy low, sell high. Traders are exactly the same, except they do it on a much shorter time frame. Now, there are other strategies where you can sell short where you want the opposite to happen, but in generally, the only time you're interested in stock price is when you're buying and selling, which makes all of the everyday fluctuations kind of meaningless. So if you're a dividend investor, or any investor for that matter, buying low is still optimal. You can get more of the stock and therefore you'll get more dividends. Because dividends are paid out how many shares of the stock you own. The more that you own, the higher your dividend payment will be. So dividends are paid regardless of what the stock price is doing on any particular day. It's the ultimate form of passive income. You buy once and then every six months or every quarter, depending how often the company pays, you'll get your dividend payment. It's such a less stressful way to invest. All you want to know is when they're paying and how much they're paying. So you can safely ignore all of the news reports because the everyday fluctuations are meaningless. They don't affect your income. So selling a stock is the same. As a dividend investor, the only reason you would sell if the income isn't no longer producing what you want, you might get a short-term profit. But once that profit is done, that's a one-time thing. You get that profit once when you sell. Whereas dividends are a regular thing, they are constantly paying over the long term. So once you sell, you're no longer getting the dividends for that share. Which is why dividend investing is a long-term strategy because you want that long-term income coming in. And whether that money comes in twice a year or quarterly or however often that company pays, you'll get that for as long as you hold the stock irrelevant of the stock price. So let's talk about how the value of your portfolio at any one time does not actually mean you made or lost anything. It's a paper loss or a paper profit. So when you're a beginner investor, it is super nerve wracking to watch the daily fluctuations of the stock market, to see the stock that you've just bought go up or down, or down particularly, but there's a huge difference between an actual loss or an actual gain and the paper loss or the paper gain based on what the value of the portfolio is at any one time. The paper value or the value of your portfolio is not what you have lost or what you have gained because you don't actually make a loss or a gain unless you sell. And here's where a lot of people go wrong. They look at the value of the portfolio and it's down and they start to panic. They start to think, I have to get out now in case I lose any more money, when in reality, again, you haven't actually lost any money. The value of your portfolio is down, but you haven't lost any money until you sell and then that loss becomes a reality. So they panic sell and make that paper loss into an actual loss. And it's so easy to fall into that mindset. If you watch the news, you only hear about the doom and gloom. You'll hear about the stock market falling, billions of dollars being wiped out in one day. No wonder people freak out. You never hear about the rallies. Rarely, if ever, do you hear about the stock market going up. You're only ever hearing about the stock market going down. If only they follow up those stories like a few days later, oh, the stock market is back to where it was a few days ago when it fell. Crisis averted. You never hear that. The last few months have been a perfect example of this. We've heard so many times where the stock market has gone down based on trade rumors or speculation. And sometimes it can fall quite dramatically, but we don't hear about the following days or a week later where it is back up to where it was before the fall. Nobody hears those stories. They only hear the negative stories. The news loves a negative story. In most cases, market falls and rises are due to fear and speculation. Rumors that go around on economy, trade, anything like that can really impact the stock market, even though the underlying principle of the company hasn't changed. Can you imagine if there was an app that showed you the perceived value of every single thing you owned, your appliances, your clothes, and it showed you every time the depreciation of those things went down. 
you'd be freaking out all the time. It'd be terrifying. Now that's not to say that there isn't true market crashes and corrections. Of course there is. We've been through them in history and they're going to be more in the future, no doubt. But it's important to know that dividends are still paid in a market crash. They just are. You will still get that deposit into your bank account even when the stock market is down. I think it's helpful here to talk about why companies pay dividends because that can put it more into perspective. So companies pay dividends based on the earnings of the business. When it's doing well, they have excess cash on hand and they have to decide what they're going to do with it. So a stable business will pay stable income to its investors. Usually they'll start paying dividends to attract investors because that can actually help the company. The more investors they have investing in that company, the more cash that they have to grow and expand the business, which means they can make more profits to give back to investors and it's a positive cycle. Of course not all companies pay dividends, it's up to the company goals and what they're trying to achieve and of the companies that do, some pay a little amount and some pay a lot. As an income investor or a dividend investor, I'm looking for companies that pay a high yield, so a lot. So of course dividends can change over time, they can increase and decrease. Most of the time they will grow gradually over time. So they might be stable for about a year and then they might increase it by a few cents. Usually growth is pretty slow in dividends, they're slowly increasing and I actually like that. I like a nice, stable, boring dividend payout because then I know what my income is going to be. But it's true that dividends can fall as well. So generally if a company is doing well, it's going to increase the dividend over time. So it goes without saying that if a company is doing poorly, it could cut the dividend as well. Now companies are really reluctant to do this simply because if they cut the dividend, investors are going to jump ship. Investors don't like it when the company cuts dividends or they have bad earnings reports or anything like that and you'll find that the stock price will usually fall after that as investors try to get out. So companies generally don't want investors to do that, so if they can help it, they don't want to cut the dividend. Now it might be a case where they've offered a good reason to cut the dividend and it's a one-time thing, and that's something to be wary of, but probably not something to jump ship over. I wouldn't get nervous until a company starts consistently lowering their dividends. That's a definite red flag and shows the company is in trouble because they can no longer afford to pay that dividend, so that's when I would be leaving. So we might as well also talk about special dividends here because that's another thing that is not effective affected by stock price, it's affected by how much cash or excess cash that the company has on hand. Special dividends are different to regular dividends, they're usually one-time payments, often usually higher than the regular dividend, although it might not be. It depends on how much extra money the company has. Usually they'll offer a special dividend if they've had a particularly good quarter or a good year, or maybe they've sold part of the business, or they've expanded into a new market or something like that. And so when they try and decide what they're going to do with the new cash on hand, one of the options is to offer a special dividend. That's going to please regular investors and probably attract new investors as well. So as you can see, as a dividend investor, you're not concerned about the daily fluctuations of the stock price. In fact, when it goes down, it's actually a great time to buy it. It's a sale of companies. And who doesn't love a great sale? It's not going to affect income. And when you're investing for the dividend, that's what you're primarily concerned about is your income. So my only advice is to ignore all of the noise, especially the news reports of doom and gloom of when the stock market falls and everyone's superannuation and everyone's in trouble, that's not the case. You need to calm down. Nothing's changed unless you sell. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.